Okay, everybody, welcome back to Law Hero. And I am really starting to uh, feel the pressure of the FE1s myself because I have to go through all the exams, which I love doing, but it's tough. Um, I have to say, you know, like keeping track of everything. Um, but you know, that's why we're here at the Law Hero headquarters. Okay, so let me just go and tell you. So this equity paper was held in March 2020 and I'm going to do a quick review. I haven't gone into it much. Um, so let's see what came up. My equity law ebook here beside me, just in case I need it. Um, because of course I don't know everything off by heart. I wish I did, but I don't. Okay, so I'm going to just look at the paper. Okay, so the first question referred to NADVTD and immediately we remember this is a constructive trust essay. Now, I love constructive trust. I think I've said this to a few times in my last equity video. Um, so basically what happens is for a constructive trust, normally it is when a bank lends money to a borrower, normally a corporate borrower. I haven't I haven't really seen personal borrowers come up, but normally it's when a certain amount of funds are put aside for a certain purpose and the person who is administer administering those funds is held to be a constructive trustee of the bank. So the beneficiary of the funds is the borrower and then the person who's administering the funds on behalf of the borrower becomes the constructive trustee. Um, so it occurs by operation of law rather than statute. It's a common law uh, trust. And actually in 2012, there was a case uh, called Bar uh, Re or in Varco Limited and Liquidation involved a number of properties. Um, I think some were in Jersey, but long story short, um, some of the properties and monies were held to be in constructive trust and the problem with constructive trust is that they need to fall within a certain categories and you'll see this in the chapter um, there needs to be certain uh, knowledge and that's the threshold around it but there is a problem when um, the case at hand doesn't fit squarely into that test and lo and behold the courts have come up with a catch-all um, kind of a um, almost exception or like a sweeping statement that um you know if the law so requires or uh if it's fair and reasonable in the circumstances for a constructive trust to arise and they've called this the new model constructive trust but unfortunately in ireland even though it's been spoken about in another case called kelly v cahill as well um it's not readily accepted in this jurisdiction so that's just a whistle stop to our constructive trust question two so what I always do is I just go down to the last line. If it's a problem question, I go down to the last line and that normally tells me what the question was about. Advise that beneficiaries under the two trusts make reference where appropriate to relevant case law and statutory provisions. Okay, well, there seems to have been uh, a trust here for beneficiaries um, who are children and so normally trustee duties will come into um question here so you see here that um you have some question around how the money is being spent about investments and i cover all that under my chapter called trustees duties just be wary in ireland that we're a little bit behind on the law um as opposed to our neighbors in the uk question three eugene f collins v garion oh okay so what does that remind me of mariva injunctions that was a case where um they had to freeze um funds because a client wasn't paying up and this a uh, quote seems to be around nefarious intention. So if you look at um, a nefarious intention to dissipate assets, well, if you're wondering, I'm drinking like mint and chamomile. Super bougie. 
Um, I have that all covered in the chapter called Injunctions. Um, the next one, Draconian, blah, 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 Colombian pictures. Okay, it's another, uh, the second part is around Anton Pillar orders. Again, covered in my notes. Question four, I'm going to go down again. Advise Eleanor and George to entitle them to the house and the money in the joint deposit account, respectively. Okay, so uh, this is joint property deposit account also covered in my trusts chapter it's a problem question it's very very easy there's lovely case law around a joint deposit account basically last person standing wins it's a bit like co-ownership in recent question. years the courts have given considerable attention to the question of whether or not where one family member guarantees a business loan okay this sounds like undue influence and guarantees and obviously the receiving of independent legal advice just check out my chapter on undue influence uh oh and he even tells you here he references ulster bank and rbsv etridge question six hubert hubert <laughs> hubert 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 anyway approaches you a uh, charitable status okay i love charitable trusts it's very straightforward now since we've had the 2009 act um polo club mm. think about the amount of people who play polo in dublin not that many might be in trouble there Question seven, write a note. Oh, there's always a notes question in the equity paper. The exceptional categories in which non-charitable purpose trusts may be enforced. Again, see my chapter on charities. The prince was governing the distribution of surplus funds uh, upon the dissolution of an unincorporated association. Again, this is covered in my charities chapter, but it's very, very small, so I wouldn't bother with it. And quist close trusts. Quist close trusts are covered under my um, trust chapter yeah trust chapter four question eight geez i i flew through this um when considering how best the court may uh, determine whether or not an estoppel arise in a given case taylor fashions uh i suggest the most appropriate approaches to would it be unconscionable okay so this is around the unconscionability limb um which has come up as another um limb in uh, assurance reliance detriment around permissory uh um uh, proprietary estoppel rather and this is covered under uh, chapter two of my of my notes it would be unconscionable for a party to permit to deny that which knowingly or unknowingly he has allowed or encouraged in order to assume in his detriment rather than to inquiring whether the circumstances can be fitted with the confines of some preconceived formula serving as a universal yardstick for every form of unconscionable behavior consider whether the courts have adopted the suggested test of unconscionability in subsequent estoppel cases in your answer make reference to jurisprudence of the irish courts and where appropriate other jurisdictions because obviously we would need some assistance from our fellow common law jurisdictions so what he didn't ask a uh, specific performance it seems but everything else was asked you had Literally everything there, proprietary estoppel, undue influence, trust, trusty duties, uh, charitable trust, constructive trust and injunctions. Gorgeous paper. Uh, I'd say a few people flew it. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please email me at info at lawhero.eu. Please continue to follow along at, at lawhero IRL on Instagram. Let me know what you thought. I thought it was grand paper. Um, one of the better ones, much, much nicer than Tort, for example. So yeah, uh, best of luck if you're sitting in equity in October. And please continue to like and subscribe. Bye, guys.